Hey folks, we're about to walk up to the top of Cap San Antonio, uh, the lighthouse up there. Pretty steep climb, uh, one hour walk, 1.9 kilometers. Um, let's see how we fare. From this little viewpoint you can get a good uh, idea of where we live. This is a pretty good view of it. Uh, we actually live up on that hill, right over across there, right across the water, up on top of the hill, that's, that's where we live. And then this is the town here, the old town, the port. It's a little paradise. Okay. I'm going to pull up stop here. When you see a good tree, it'd be a sin not to do some pull-ups. And he just sleeps through it. All I can say is, check out the view. I think the camera does it justice, really. You see the big mountain over there in the far distance? That's actually a, a mountain range that then goes underwater and all the way to Ibiza, an underwater mountain range. And that's the part of it there. So it's just incredible, you know? Very few people do things like this um, in, in these parts. You know, most people are in, indoors, doing whatever, but to, to get out on beautiful days like this, lovely winter's day, it's just incredible and you just soak up so much energy, it makes you feel so good. Just being, we walk through all the trees there and you just feel there's so much more oxygen to, to breathe in. Your brain becomes clearer, you can have a clear thought. And you start thinking clearly and ideas start to come. Um, you can learn so much from just, be, just being in nature. Uh, things that you can't learn in a classroom, you can learn just by being in nature and the key word is being, just being there, and breathing. India is really interesting. <laughs> right, son? Okay, we're nearly at the top. Let's keep going. So as you can see, we made it to the top. Um, wasn't as tough as the other day, right? No, it's good. Once I think once you get going, after about ten minutes, then it gets it gets good. Your walking legs kick in. And... It was pretty steep, but uh, but not very far. So it was pretty cool, right? Yeah. Check out the view. Wow, look at that sunset. That is incredible. So we made it back down, almost, just uh, just that to go, to get back down, just as it's getting dark. And uh, one of the reasons why uh, we're, we've been doing these uh, these hikes, we're doing a hike every single day right now, we're committed to that, because um, we're training for something, and uh, something very exciting that we're very excited about, and uh, we're going to be sharing what that is in... Uh, in, in a little while, not right now, a little while, once everything's set up. So, uh, yeah, please uh, keep keep joining us and then you'll find out what that is. We had to cut a video short yesterday because it got dark and it was just too dark for the for the video, but uh, that's where we were yesterday, um, right on top of that. And today we're just finishing up today's little hike. Hey, there's little Baba and Victoria. Hello. So one of the questions that we got um, asked was, did we register Indigo? So I thought we'd talk a little bit about the legalities of having an unassisted home birth um, today. So basically, um, the answer is yes, we did register Indigo because um, Matthew and I like to travel a lot, so we needed a passport, so we would have registered him anyway. Um, if you've been watching our previous videos, you'll know that we had an unassisted home birth and Unfortunately, the placenta didn't birth naturally, and so we ended up seeking medical assistance and going into hospital. So what happened when we went into hospital was that the um, 
the midwife on, on staff asked a lot of questions about who we were seeing, who we went to for our um, prenatal um, care. Called? care, yeah, for the, for the checkups. And I said, well, I did it myself. And um, so she was very wary of me anyway. And uh, she said, look, I want you to know we've called, um, what are they called? Social services. Social services. I'm undercarved here. <laughs> we're just finishing up the walk and we're putting on the carb. So we've called social services. Dehydrated. Yeah. And, um, what happened then? So the next day, social services came in to see me and they asked us a lot of questions. So if you're considering having an, an unassisted birth, you need to be um, aware that if you don't go in yourself and register the baby um, before they get to you, the likelihood is that social services are going to come and see you. So you need to be prepared for that. Dun, dun, dun. But really all they want to know is that you're going to look after the baby and that the child's in good hands and that the child's safe, not that you're just some strange people who don't care and you just decided to have a home birth because you couldn't be bothered or something. They just want to know that you that you care about your child and you love your child and you're going to take care of them. So if they do come, just um, be responsible and just answer their questions because they just really do just want to know that everything's going to be fine with your child. And any any from what I've read, any people who have had problems with social services as a result of having an unassisted birth are people who've kind of slammed the door and are not allowed the midwives to come in and check up on the child or not allowed um, the social services to come in and ask the questions. So so just, just let them come in and do the questioning and then you'll be free after that. Another point about the legalities is that we, we did it in the UK and Ireland so if, if you want to know more information about exactly what you can and can't do Look, if you're in America, visit Laura Shanley's website. I think it's um, unassistedbirth or unassistedchildbirth.com. Um, in the UK and Ireland, the law pretty much is that a woman can give birth anywhere she wants and any way she wants, but she's only allowed to be assisted or aided by a qualified um, medical professional such as a doctor or a midwife. Which means that if you, um, if the husband catches the baby, that's illegal so you just want to be prepared for that and that's all I'm going to say on that matter um, what some people do and I'm not telling you to do this I'm just sharing um, is that they will go for the prenatal checkups and then on the very last day they'll um, when it actually comes time to give him birth they will um, just not call the midwife until after the baby's been born and um, so that's another thing and it's like you know oops it just all happened so quickly so that's just one, something that other people do. Um, have I answered everything? That sounds really good to me, yeah. Okay, um, there's some other questions that we got asked about vaccinations, but we'll leave that for another video. Yeah. Okay, um, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the legalities, anything maybe that I didn't touch on that you want to know, just leave it in the questions below, or anything else about the unassisted birth that you think would be interesting, leave a comment for us and um, we'll try and answer it as quick as possible. <laughs> That's great information, and uh, yeah, I, I just want to definitely reiterate that you know the social services they, they are concerned about the child when they whenever they hear that uh, you know there's been no medical no medical assistance, um, they are concerned about it, and so um, they're just looking out for the for the for the baby. So as long as they see that you're responsible and you're open and you're not cagey or uh, aloof or anything like that and they see that you're a responsible person and you love the baby and uh, the reasons for you doing the unassisted birth was because of your point of view on uh, that it's actually the healthiest thing. You want um, to give the child a gentle birth. Yeah, that you want to give the child a gentle birth and um, you just had different ideas than uh, the mainstream establishment does. It's not that you were um, irresponsible or just didn't care or anything like that. Like when the social first social worker came to see us she was like oh I was, I was so worried when I heard that you had no medical uh, assistance and um, I, I just and there was no prenatal care or anything like that she said, I, I just thought that oh you know this could be like some you know couple in a drug den or something heroin addicts or something like that who you know who just just didn't bother uh, but then when she, she met us and you know we were just totally open with her and just gave all our reasons for everything and talked and about the preparation and yeah yeah exactly talked about the preparation and everything then she's like okay you know we, we can see that uh, you've got um, your, your highest interest is the welfare of the baby and uh, that's that's really what it's about okay um, so be responsible yeah that's us from now my name is Matthew I'm Victoria 
and uh, this is indigo see you next time bye